Hi, Dalen Zartman here with Rescue Methods. This segment is going to be about ventilation, establishing your purge time charts, and some different applications with that ventilation to remove those hazardous atmospheres or displace those hazards so that the atmosphere becomes more tenable. When we start, we want to know what, we, what we're getting into hazard-wise. One of the primary things we need to assess from a gas perspective is the R gas D rating on that hazard. So if it has a weight uh, that is heavier than one, or for example, hydrogen disulfide is an R gas D of 1.19. If we know that that weight is heavier than what our standard air weight is, we know that that hazard is going to be at the low-lying area of that space. When we apply our ventilation, if we're using positive pressure and negative pressure in succession, we want to make sure that our ducting reflects the weight of that and how we want to extract that hazard from the space. So heavy gases that are low lying are going to receive negative pressure ventilation ductwork all the way at the base of the space. We're going to push from the top side or the height level of the space with positive pressure. If we've got a gas that's lighter than air, then we're going to do the converse of that. So we're going to place our negative pressure up high in the space and our positive pressure ducting down low in the space. So that's one of our first analysis components when we're looking at what the hazard is and how we're going to ventilate it. The second thing we need to do is a purge time calculation. So as we're evaluating our depth, we're also going to evaluate how many turns and bends we have to apply to our ductwork. A basic rule of thumb is that every implement that you place on your ductwork, whether it's a saddle, an elbow, or an additional 25 foot section of ducting, it's about a 20% reduction in overall CFM of the fan. So when you analyze that, Look at the lay of your ductwork, ensure that your blower is at least five feet from the space, look at all the sections of, of implements and, and appliances you're going to have to put on that ductwork and start doing deductions. Once you've got that total quantity of deductions, whether it's 20%, 40%, or 60%, you need to look at the total CFM of the fan. Some fans will break that information down for you, so they'll give you the CFM reduction per appliance. Other fans have one straight CFM listing unrestricted. You take that number, you do those deductions. Once you have that overall CFM with all the appliances in place, you're going to take that and you're going to correlate it with the overall cubic size or cubic volume of the space that you're ventilating. For example, if we had a 10 foot wide by 10 foot high and 10 foot deep confined space, that would give us 1,000 cubic feet. We would then use that cubic foot number on the purge time chart, and we would cross-reference it with our overall CFM. So we've got a CFM scale on the right side of the chart, if you're oriented to it correctly, and then you've got a volume of the space chart on the left side of the chart. You're going to use a straight edge to connect those two points, and the intermediate sliding scale gives you the time or the purge time calculation to get seven and a half complete air recirculations of that space. The theory is that seven and a half air recirculations are going to give you a completely fresh air environment, including all dead spaces. Understand that that's a little bit theoretical, but it gives us a great trending tool when analyzing our exhaust points with monitors to see if our numbers are reflecting that calculated purge time. If we come up with the conclusion that it takes, for example, six and a half minutes to achieve our seven and a half air recirculations utilizing our chart, then at our exhaust points, our monitors should reflect a fresh air state in that time frame. If in that time frame our monitors are not reflecting a fresh air state, then it means that that hazard is continuing to produce or emit, or our ventilation is ineffective. Either we've got a crimp in our hose, we haven't calculated our CFM correctly, we're not drafting or drawing appropriately, or our inlet and exhaust sizes are incorrect meaning that we're over-pressurizing the space and just churning around all that hazard and all that air. So there's a little bit of science that goes into ventilation. We want to make sure that we're being systematic about it and that we're constantly evaluating it using tracer tapes, purge times, as well as exhaust point monitoring to make sure that our ventilation is effective and accomplishing what we intend to accomplish. Once we've got all of our data built up and we've got our ventilation format created for what our objectives and expectations are, we can then start assembling the system. In this particular blower, we've got the ability to do negative pressure as well as positive pressure. All of our ductwork components have ratcheting straps on them. We want to make sure that when we make these connections, whether it's from ductwork to splicer, 
duct work to elbow or duct work to blower, that we advance that webbing section up past the bevel point on the connection points. Once we're in that location, we can then cinch that down. Once it's cinched, it's a strong recommendation to utilize duct tape to get good seals around all these connection points so that we don't lose any segments or blow apart any segments. Remember that 20% rule for each appliance and try and keep them to a minimum. Other components that we'll be attaching are the elbows and the saddles. We'd use the same principle on the elbows, so notice that one side is beveled, one side has a flat rib. We'd go ahead and take that assembly, get it all the way past that bevel, cinch that element down, and duct tape it as well. If we're making connections to our saddle, typically speaking, the saddles are designed for those limited space entries. So we're taking this diameter duct work and we're reducing it to a very narrow profile space so that we can accommodate transfers in and out of the space with rescuers without having to displace our ventilation. So we'll make that elbow connection and then we can also take our plate glide. So there's a flat plate that will integrate into this keeper mechanism here and lock in under your manhole cover so that you can pull this segment all the way over to one side of that limited diameter opening. It's also important that you analyze the capabilities of your blower. There's gas powered blowers and there's electric blowers and then there's intrinsically safe blowers. It's best recommended in confined space applications to use intrinsically safe blowers uh, that have an integrated kill arc plug or are grounded so that the on off activations of the system are not going to produce any sparks in a potentially flammable environment. Contemplate your power source, whether it's a generator on board on the vehicle or a portable generator. And if those are gas powered entities, ensure that they're removed significantly away from the blower so that we're not drafting or drawing CO from the exhaust of that generator back into the system and pumping that into the space. With all those considerations, you can see there's a little bit of thought process that has to go into this. So just systematically work through it from beginning to end. Once your system is built, built well and your ventilation plan is built well, you can integrate all these components and have an effective outcome.